Ah, that looks good on a hot Florida day. Glad I brought along my floaties. <laughs> oh, maybe not. Whoa, no swimming here. I wouldn't get into it and wouldn't want it in me. Would you? But then again, every time it rains, fertilizers, pesticides, oils, and other materials wash into Hillsborough rivers, streams, and Tampa Bay. Some of it percolates through the ground of the Florida aquifer. And these are all sources of our drinking water. No matter where the water comes from or what's in it when it begins, source water is processed and purified to meet or exceed federal standards mandated by the Clean Drinking Water Act. And because of that, you never have to think twice about drinking it. We can do the same thing with any used water. I mean any. If you get my drift. And maybe we should consider using whatever we have in whatever way we want because it's getting harder and more expensive to get the water we need to start with. 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by water in one form or another. But less than 3% is fresh water. And less than 1% is accessible for our use. Unless you want to climb Mount Everest and gather a pot of snow to make your morning coffee. <laughs> You'd think with so little water available to us, we wouldn't throw any of it away. We should be using it again and again and again. There's nothing in water that we can't get out. And once water is just water, it's perfectly safe and tasty. Scrubbing water clean enough to drink is a matter of cost and use. How are we gonna use the water? And how much does it cost to get it clean enough for that? Think of a gasoline analogy. Premium gas is the most expensive and the cleanest because it goes through an extra refining process. It's the same deal with used water. Take it through that extra cleaning step and it's clean enough to drink. The way we deal with water now isn't very efficient. Consider, we take water from rivers of the aquifer or Tampa Bay, we clean it to drinking water standards and we use it for all sorts of stuff. Then it disappears into a sewer, which takes it to another treatment plant. It's cleaned again just enough that it's safe to put back into the environment. We just paid to clean it up and now we're throwing it away? What's up with that? Here's another thing to consider. Billions of gallons of water fall on Hillsborough County each year as rain. Some of it soaks into the aquifer or runs into rivers where we collect it, clean it, and use it. But much of it runs into storm drains that carry it straight into Tampa Bay. We don't even try to capture it for cleanup and reuse. But some people think that in the not too distant future, all of that will change. What are we thinking? How is this the highest and best use of a limited resource? Recycling our water is a beautiful thing. Let me count the ways. Recycling water means we have to take less from our natural systems, the aquifer, bay, and rivers that provide our drinking water. The more we take from natural sources, the less there is for nature. And as the old saying goes, you don't want to rob Mother Nature. The more water we recycle, the less wastewater gets discharged into our natural systems. But pumping recycled water into damaged or dried out streams, wetlands, and aquifers can revitalize them. Think of it this way. Water is a resource. No matter where it begins or ends, there's only a certain amount of it. It's our job to decide what water goes where, for what purpose, and with what consequences. And also, how much are we willing to pay? So, everyone who's for recycling our water, raise your hand. I see a lot of hands. If you're standing next to someone without their hand up, give them a good schmack. Come on, get their brain going. This isn't rocket science, it's earth science. And we're all part of the system. Now let's go back to another call from one of our viewers. Melissa Allen, M-E-L-I-S-S-A-A-L-L-E-N, from Temple Terrace, Florida. Uh, my question is how much money can be saved from recycling water and how would it affect my monthly water bill? All right, well, that's a good question. We touched on it briefly before, Bart, uh, how much water could be saved and, and how would it affect customers' water bills? Uh, the primary use for our system is irrigation, outdoor irrigation and our typical customer may use between 10 to 15,000 gallons outdoors. If you look at that amount, it could save them $60 a month 
uh, and a range depending on how big their lawn is and how much water they use. It could range for smaller lawns down to thirty dollars or upwards mm -hmm. of ninety or hundred dollars a month, depending on how big of area they irrigate and how much they use. That's that's pretty significant. But what what about in in a, in a one ask Andy and York too? I mean, what about this idea that we we all uh, should have these big, beautiful, lush lawns here in, in our in our part of the world. It's St. Augustine, but it's you know it's it's uh, bluegrass and and all the other grass varieties around the country. Um, I mean, are, are you saying that we can we can have our cake and eat it too? That is, that we can continue to use as much water as we've always used if we install these new recycling systems. Well, the good news here in Hillsborough County is we don't use as much water as we always used. Before we started doing reclaimed water and before we started a conservation program that we have, our customers were using on average of 148 gallons per day per person. Today, they're down to 86 gallons per day per person. So I applaud them for their education, for their understanding, and their utilization of water today. Why have we made such strides in Hillsborough County? Uh, because of the water issues, because I think everybody has learned that we've already gone to seawater desalination, as they mentioned, some communities have. No one in the United States has a 25 million gallon a day desalination facility like we do. We have very expensive water when you compare us to some other parts of the nation. Uh, however, you need to continue to create, as you grow, you need to continue to get more water, create more sources. If you don't recycle some, or if you can recycle some, then you take that amount that you recycle out of the equation, and you'll never have to go out and get that quantity for the new customers that come in, for the new, new it, people that And Bart, you said that we have some, it, our water is pretty expensive compared to other parts of the nation. Is, is it that expense that in part caps down demand here in Hillsborough County? Well, and again, I, I don't know that the expense itself, I think it's a, a combination of things. I mean, obviously we're in an economic time that we as a utility, and all the utilities around Tampa Bay, as well as Tampa Bay Water is looking at um, the reduced use of their water and they didn't forecast for that and the rates uh, need to be raised for them to continue to provide the service if people are going to use less. And it's a conundrum we're in yeah. because we, we haven't changed our rates to, to this mode or this utilization. We in Hillsborough County haven't changed our rates in 10 years and we're trying to hold those rates steady um, throughout the rest of this year and, and as far as we can. Um, and, and Barton York, uh, let me ask you a big picture question. That is that some people think that fresh water uh, and competition for fresh water will be the big issue at, once we get through the oil crisis that we're in right now. That, that right now we're all wondering where we're going to get our oil from and, and whether or not we're using it wisely. The people think that down the road, um, both here and around the world, that fresh water is going to be the issue of the 21st century. Do you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. If you just think of the population forecast and what we have today, um, about 60% of the U.S. population lives in cities. In 20 years, 87% of all people will live in urban areas, and most of them along the coast, um, in areas wh which are already scarce in regarding the water supply. So that's a, it's a major stress uh, for these uh, communities to find water, and, and they will fight uh, and, and look for more innovative solutions to recycle their local resources. It might be the local groundwater and their streams, but that's likely not sufficient and they will tap into recycled water. Mm -hmm. yeah, Andy? Absolutely. Uh, you know, out, out in the West, we've had, we've had uh, water allocations cut and we've had farms go dry. Uh, you drive up and down the center of California and you can see orchards that are no longer in, in production. Uh, that happened in Australia if they are following the news over there with some of their droughts. Uh, so it's, it's absolutely critical uh, to, to try to boost our supplies. I want to get back to, you, 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 mentioned, uh, you mentioned conservation, which I think is fantastic. And, and you said, can we have our cake and eat it too? And I think it's important, they, the Reclaim Water does give us an opportunity to, to uh, potentially use more water if we wanted to. Uh, but I would suggest that we conserve all water. And in, while it's, it's less expensive to use reclaimed water than potable water, it's still something that is really valuable and, and that we should use it uh, wisely as you need it. Uh, so just 
Mm -hmm. to throw that in. Bart, what's your talk, what's your take rather about whether or not uh, in, in the coming uh, century that fresh water will kind of rival uh, the issue of oil. I mean, we've seen oil be in the news for the last 40 years. Do you think that fresh water is going to be in the news in the coming future as, as, as the resource we're all concerned about? 